brassicas can be started in the nursery where you make a nursery bed you start the seeds cover with mulch and then now you you even undergo the hardening of process before you transplant into the field but also you can start the seeds directly in the field you pour seeds in a in rows that are 60 centimeters apart or 40 it depends and then now after they've emerged you thin them to 20 centimeters between the plants direct sowing normally consumes a lot of seeds if you compare if you are to start in the nursery and then transplant also when starting seed either in the nursery or direct sowing you need to drench your seeds with the starter solution after 10 days that is if need be seekers prefer fine soil that has been well tilled and also it should be draining properly it shouldn't be sticking on to water for a very long time this is a mature plot that we've been harvesting for the past two months. What you need to do, and eventually what we did after transplanting them in rows between 40 centimeters and the plant 20 centimeters apart, we started with the basalt fertilizer of DAP, five grams per plant, and then now we maintained our field weed free and after two weeks we did our first stop dressing with CAN and then two weeks from the first stop dressing we did the second stop dressing with urea we strongly recommend the alternation of the two top dressing fertilizers so as to achieve better results we also ensure there is constant supply of water so that our plants does not suffer from transplanting shock. And even as still at this age, we provide a lot of water because these are brassicas and brassicas are made of a very large percentage of water. So there is no shortcut to water. The water should be of high quality and should not be containing contaminants, heavy metals or salts. The main pest challenge we faced was aphids, thrips and diamond back moth. But we did control this to a level that it didn't destroy our crop totally. Uh, you can use cultural means, but if the pests continue to be a menace, you can now do chemical control which should be of the last resort. The disease problem we encountered was soft rot and black rot and we did control this using chemical control. The disease can be very destructive so you'd rather go about it with a preventive measure rather than a curative measure. You start to control it before it appears. With proper watering, top dressing, and weeding, you can harvest your kelps twice a week or once a week. Otherwise, when harvesting, it's important to do it correctly. For our case, we, we leave a stalk, we cut like this. You don't remove entirely. Because that way you leave a, the plant with an injury that will negatively impact on its survival and also regaining after injury. So when you cut like this, now the stalk will wither and fall off by its own. You won't injure the plant. So it won't suffer from any shock of harvesting. Either plant a thousand-headed variety 
or the collards, it depends with your personal preference and also the intended use and the area you come from. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe, like, comment and share with your colleagues so that we may get the publicity we need to continue creating amazing contents like you always do. Until the next video, ciao and keep growing.